Hello and welcome again to Selenium XPath tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to understand the types of XPath. So in XPath, you have two types. One is the absolute XPath and another one is the relative XPath. So the difference between absolute and relative XPath is basically uh, the absolute XPath contains the complete path from the root element to the web element that is uh, that is the desired element right so for example in the html page that we have saw let me go back and show you the html page so in the case of html in case of absolute xpath what will happen is you will start with the root node so it will start with the html so for example you're looking for this node 2 here right so you'll start with html then you will go to the body, the child element. So you'll say HTML slash body and then the child element of the body, which contains this particular node here. So the child element which contains this node is nav. So you'll say forward slash nav and then forward slash a and the index of this particular element, right? So it's a slash a and the value two. So basically, that's how you will traverse in the case of absolute xpath so and absolute xpath starts with the root node and the format is single forward slash so if it, if there is a single forward slash it is an absolute xpath now what is the drawback of using absolute xpath is because if, for example you have a dom structure or folder structure uh, in html you have you call it as html dom which has a certain structure so you have html tag then you have uh, the title the body etc and if there is any change within this structure then this absolute xpath will become invalid now when it comes to relative xpath so relative xpath uh, doesn't start from the root it starts from the mid of the html dom structure and the format of relative xpath is that it starts with double forward slash so absolute xpath starts with forward slash and relative xpath starts with double forward slash and it is less brittle. So in case there is a, a minor change in the HTML DOM structure, relative xpath will, the chances of failing uh, of relative xpath is pretty low as compared to the absolute xpath because absolute xpath traverses from the root till that node and relative xpath starts from the mid of the page and finds out the that particular element so if there is a structural change on the page uh, on the html page it is very uh, uh, unlikely to impact the relative xpath but will most likely impact the absolute xpath now let's understand absolute xpath and relative xpath with example so let me minimize this window here so here we have the Chrome open and Salesforce developer page open, right? So if I want to find the absolute XPath for this web element, right? The name, the first name. So I'll just right click, inspect that particular element. And on this particular uh, page, which is the developer tool here, I'll just say Command F or Control F, it is Windows then to start with the absolute xpath you start with the forward slash just one slash right and as soon as you say forward slash then the root element is html right so you, you just start writing html okay and then forward slash so any child element of the html so html is the root node then it has the root uh, the child node as head okay so if I minimize that, you will see that there is a child node head and then there is a child node body. And within that body, this particular web element ha is there, right? So for finding the absolute xpath, I'll just go to the node body, right? Now you can see that particular node has been highlighted and below body, I can traverse to any node that I'm looking for, right? So that's how you will write your absolute xpath. So for example, I want to come to this particular div right so so i'll start with this div first right so i'll say div 
and then the child of that particular div right so that's how i'll be traversing so if i want to come to this particular div what i'll do is i'll just say div 2 because that's the second div so first div second div this is the third div right so i'll just say change it to third right now i'm in this div which has the id as flash now i can traverse to any of the child elements in that div right so i just say forward slash and if i say div it will select the first div or the first child of this particular node so this is how you will work out the absolute x path in the chrome you can inspect the element and you can directly right click and copy the full x path you can say copy full x path and then paste it here and it will copy the full x path for you right so you don't have to write it on your own only in the case of absolute um, uh, relative x path then you will be required to write your own complex x path so that they are less prone to error when you are using them in your automation framework so for the absolute uh, or for the relative x path we'll just start with the forward slash right so when we say forward to forward slash it says it starts from any of the uh, it starts from the mid of the html dom so this code here this is structure is the html dom structure for this particular page that you see on your ui right so if i say double forward slash and then because uh, we know that this is the input field so if you just right click and inspect you'll see that this is the input field right so double forward slash and the tag is input so we'll just start with input as soon as you write input it will select the first input uh, tag name that is available in this html dom in this code here right but we, we are not interested in this first input uh, tag here we want this input with a type text and name and id there are some attributes here right so then we can specify some of the attribute to basically figure out this particular input type or the text input type rather than the input type that is available for uh, the first input type that is available on this page so that's where we'll use the attributes right and attribute we can use these are the attributes type name id etc so we'll use the attribute name this time right and we'll say quotes and we'll copy and paste the name the value of the name right and then close the square braces now you can see one of one selected that means this is the unique x path and the this x path or the web element has been highlighted in the code as well as here as well as soon as you hover on this particular code here you, it will highlight that particular x path or the web element on this web page as well right so that's the difference between the relative and absolute x path so we have seen that absolute x path you it starts with the forward slash single forward slash relative x path is less brittle and starts with double forward slash and there will be very less cases that you will be using absolute x path because it's not reliable a lot so most of the time you will be using relative x path and that's the reason of covering the types of, of x path in this particular tutorial so hope you like the tutorial thank you very much for watching